Welcome to our podcast, The Spark, medical education for curious minds, where we bring you the latest ideas and insights from faculty, students, and staff in UCSF's medical education community. I'm Megan O'Connor, instructional designer with the Technology Enhanced Education Group. And I'm Karen Fleming, Communications Manager for the Office of Medical Education. In this episode, we'll hear from medical student Ogana Namani, who explains the concept of spiral learning, a key part of the Bridges curriculum, and how it impacts her work as a future physician. We also talked to Susan Masters, the School of Medicine's Associate Dean for Curriculum, who retired last month and who helped develop the medical school's Bridges curriculum. So Karen, Ogana Namani is a medical student, and isn't she also an Olympic athlete? Exactly. Pretty inspiring, right? In my interview with her, Ogana describes how she applies spiral learning in both medical school and as she trains for championship volleyball games. Here's the interview now. So Ogana, let's talk about the Bridges curriculum so far and your experience here at UCSF. Any highlights you'd like to share? What's it been like to be a med- first year medical student here? I really feel a part of the community and you can sense the pride as you walk around campus here at Parnassus or at Mission Bay or Mount Zion or wherever you are. Uh, the UCSF community is a strong one and people really enjoy what they do. They're really happy here and they're just doing incredible things. You can sit next to someone on the bus and they're finding the cure for the next debilitating illness. It's just, uh, it's an incredible place to be. In the curriculum itself here at school, what do you see as the value of coaches and mentors? What does that mean for you? It means the world to me. To have a coach again, I'm so fortunate. I thought I wouldn't have a coach again after my playing career ended, but to have a coach be a part of my curriculum here, it's uh, it's amazing. And the thoughtfulness of the School of Medicine to really integrate that into our curriculum because they know that any path that's valuable is going to be hard, it's going to be difficult at times, and to have someone that has been in your shoes and has been there and really understands the struggle and can help you to navigate the field of medicine is just invaluable. Um, and they're a coach in every sense of the word. My coach, Catherine Lau, has been there for me every step of the way here and has really guided me and has been a big reason why my experience has been so special. So I'm so thankful for the coaches and all the work that they've put in and thankful to the School of Medicine for making that happen because that's a rare thing that we have here. Someone that's dedicated to your success and there to help you. And the cool thing about it is you get to meet other coaches throughout the curriculum and they're all great. So it's been it's been a great experience to have that. The Bridges curriculum ri- relies on certain forms of, of learning for medical students, one of which I've heard is the concept, concept of spiral learning. Can you tell us a little bit about, first of all, what is spiral learning and what does it mean for you? Mm-hmm. So spiral learning, I like the term because if you think about a spiral, things that are continuously coming back to you might not come back to you in the same for- form that you saw it in at the in the original encounter, but it's going to come back to you in one way or another. And that's a very special, important aspect of spiral learning. And also, another thing that's not so intuitive about spiral learning is that it, it mimics real-life context. It mimics real-life situations. So it's not a cookie-cutter example or kind of like a bread-and-butter example of how to learn it's just coming at you in different creative ways and it kind of highlights different learning pathways that you're not used to so I always compare it to my playing days I remember when I first started playing volleyball I started out learning the basics and that's very important but as you get older and older and more experience and your levels start to advance the margins start to thin out and the people that are very successful are those that have the most game experience. But unfortunately, on the national team, you can't play all year round together, but you gotta find ways to get as much game experience in as possible. So the way our coaches decided to kind of revolutionize our idea of training is to give us game-like situations that are gonna come at us in different ways through different drills, but make it very realistic. The Bridges curriculum has kind of implemented that in the same way as that we have a lot of case-based learning, case-based presentations. There are faces, there are stories behind the things that we learn, and those are very realistic. And that allows us to be able to make that transition into the clinical learning session or 
clinical learning period for us will be hopefully a, a better transition because we're, we're primed to learn and think in the ways that experienced, skilled clinicians think. And I think that's like a true asset to have because you can't do the rote training, the rote memorization is just not going to cut it when you have to really perform at a high level. Thinking a bit longer term, once you've graduated in a few years, what are you most excited about? Where do you see yourself going for residency training and beyond? What are you most excited about for your career? That's a great question. Me, I think as an athlete, um, I learn to take things one day at a time, especially with the two-year-old daughter at home. So I just try and live for today. Uh, but I do, and I think uh, I have the luxury for living for today because I'm in such a supportive environment here at UCSF. Not only my coaches, but the leadership from Dean Lucy and everyone here is so supportive and they're very invested in our education and our learning. So I feel like I can afford to take it one day at a time because the support system around me is gonna make sure that I get on the right path and make sure that I get exposure to all aspects of medicine so that I'm able to make the right decision down the road. But live the dream today and take it day by day. Now that we've heard the student perspective on the Bridges curriculum and some of its main learning principles, let's talk to the retiring Associate Dean for Curriculum, Susan Masters, who led the development and rollout of Bridges, which launched at the medical school last August. So Susan, what drew you to teach at UCSF in the first place? Uh, long ago, after uh, I got my PhD at the University of California, San Diego, um, my husband, uh, went, who's a physician, went through the match and opened that envelope and just happened to end up at, in San Francisco. So he was a resident at Kaiser San Francisco. So I found a job here at UCSF as a postdoctoral fellow with Henry Bourne. And, um, and that was in 1984. And so I just sort of fell into one job after another. And that's how I'm still here over 30 years later. So after 30 years on faculty, what have you seen as some of the most important innovations in learning and teaching at UCSF? So I would say by far the most important change, not only in, in learning and teaching at UCSF, but really in our lives, has been technology. Because over these 30 years, the people around us, the students, the faculty, the staff, have remained consistently outstanding. So that hasn't changed. But what has changed is the way that technology has um, made education so much more of a partnership. The fact that so much information is that people, medical students and faculty used to have to memorize or read through textbook tomes is now at your fingertips. So information is, the, the, the facts are more readily available and we've been able to shift to making sure people know how to apply that information that is at their fingertips. The other thing is that our ability to share education with our learners has been enhanced by this technology. Uh, not only leveling the playing field so that we're not the experts on stage anymore, that they they also can get at the information, but also that we don't need to be face-to-face. -face. So we do a lot in terms of sharing our educational methods with them online, and they can be out in the field doing things. So what changes in science, education, and patient care necessitated the change in the curriculum at UCSF in the first place? So in essence, how does the Bridges curriculum reflect and how is it adapted to the rapid changes that have occurred in these areas? Yes, yeah, so you've picked out three of the most important increases in the pace of, of innovation that really do inform our, our curriculum. Let's start with the education one first. So I think that there have been ad advances in, in the science of education uh, over the last 10 years, particularly in adult education, that have demonstrated to us how important reflection and metacognition are to a learner's ability, an adult learner's ability um, to learn. And it, when they direct their own learning, they learn much more effectively and deeply. And so one of the key facets of the Bridges curriculum is an emphasis 
on learner, learners using performance data to uh, inform their goals going forward and to reflect on their performance with um, a, a very close advisor. So these are our coaches in the Bridges curriculum. And using this adult learning um, is, is really, again, uh, embedded in the Bridges curriculum. It's, it's um, formalized in our arch weeks when time is put aside for that kind of learning. And in a lot of our assessment, we have assessment for learning in a, so um, with a lot of formative assessments so that students can, can practice and see how they're doing before they undertake a summative exam. So that's been an important feature. In terms of science, the pace of science is, is dramatically increasing, and this is fantastic. It's in all areas of science, from biomedical, looking for cures to cancer and other inherited diseases, all the way to uh, advan rapid advantage advances, rapid advances in, um, in uh, system science and in public health. Um, and in the resources we need to increase the access to care. And so we want to make sure that our students have a solid grounding in the tools of inquiry so that they will be able to handle and apply for the benefit of their patients and populations the discoveries that we don't yet know. And so we're focusing on the tools of inquiry as opposed to focusing on what we know right now. They need to be able to, in the future, deal with and uh, apply the knowledge that, that we know is coming. And then lastly, in terms of patient care, uh, increasingly we are thinking holistically uh, about how uh, the, the health of patients um, is not just those who are ill now, it's, it's our larger community. How do we do preventative care? How do we get out to, how do we get to patients who are having difficulty having access to care and quality of care? All of those are our new science that are embedded in the Bridges curriculum. So thinking back again to the genesis of Bridges, why was the time and the place here at UCSF right? And what sort of what prompted that, that synchronicity of time and place and it being ideal for Bridges at UCSF? So I think we've been a leader in both science and education as well as patient care for many years. And so we have the teams and the talent here at UCSF to, to broach this kind of ende endeavor. Um, we have a commitment to excellence. Uh, we have a commitment to diversity. We have a commitment to, to trying new things. And so um, all of those came together. We're not the only schools. Many of the medical schools in the country are um, employing or embarking on changes in these directions. And, and so we're, we're along with everyone else trying to modernize our curriculum. I think what's a little bit different about us is we're trying to put it together as a full curriculum all at one time. In a few months, the next, uh, the next cohort of students will begin here and in entering into Bridges. What would you say to this group of Bridges students as they begin their careers at UCSF? So I have two recommendations for the new students or learners at any stage uh, of their life. One of them is don't be afraid to try something new. Uh, the way I think about it is that we all have cycles where we need to reinvigorate and re-inspire ourselves. It's sort of like, remember when, when you were back in grade school and every September you got your new pencils and your new, your new clothes and a new year of school was coming around. And so I see that in clinicians and staff um, uh, and faculty around me. It's, it's always when you start something new, if you volunteer for a new committee, meet some new people on a new shared vision of something, that's very invigorating. It's kind of scary at times, but it's, it's good to do every once in a while. It'll, it'll, it'll reinvigorate you. So that I would recommend. And the other thing I recommend is that it's important to return to your inspirational core in another way. So I would recommend that everybody keep a folder and put in it 
um, their, uh, the things that they've written, such as their um, application to medical school, their personal essay for residency, and read that at least once a year. And then put in there the, the affirmations and celebrations that others write for you, your grateful patients, um, some of the, the what what your friends have written for you, some of the feedback that you get from your um, those who instruct you about how remarkable you are and what you contribute. So keep those in a folder and at least once a year read some read those things so you can remember why you're here, where you're going, and what amazing things you bring to the world. Well, there you have it, listeners. Today we heard medical student Ogana Namani sing the praises of spiral learning as part of the medical school's Bridges curriculum, and Susan Masters commented on where it all began and her thoughts on where the next medical education innovations lie. We hope you're subscribing to The Spark on SoundCloud, and don't forget to read the staff newsletter to find out this month's news, events, special announcements, and kudos. The music in this podcast comes from Pottington Bears Egress, licensed under CC NC 3.0 and available at